<laughs> Hello and welcome to episode 58 of the Compassion and Cucumbers podcast. You are truly creepy. <laughs> Today is our Halloween episode, our very first Halloween episode, is it? No. Our second Halloween episode. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> well, actually, I can't remember if we specifically did a Halloween episode last year. Yeah, I can't either. Um, I do wish that you could have seen how far back in Sam's head her eyes rolled while I was doing all of that. <laughs> it was it was pretty pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known. Like, I really should have known that, that was going to happen. Yeah. Um, and just fair warning, we may be a little punchy. A little be bit. Because we just flew back from Washington, D.C. today. Yeah, we did. So, you know, we got a little bit of that travel lag thing going on, even though it's a short flight. It, it, Still, oh, travel gosh. takes it out of you. Super short flight. Like, yeah. we need to go to D.C. more often because that's just a puddle jump. It's, it's I know. even faster than getting to New York. Uh, yeah, it is. And um, the only bad part about those short flights is it can be a little bumpy. Yeah, a little bit because yeah. you're on a smaller plane and you don't, and you're not as up, up as high. Yeah, and, you don't get as much altitude on yeah, those but, shorter jaunts. So, yeah, but so fast. It was like you're up, you have a drink, you're down. Yeah, 55 minutes. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. And that's like 55 minutes from, it seems like it's from boarding, but no, it's from no, takeoff. No, it's from takeoff. It just goes so quick. It really does. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, we might be a little on the punchy side. Slightly. <laughs> and we had a very long and very full weekend at the uh, AVA Summit. We did. Over the weekend. And we really can't wait to talk with all of you about it. It yeah. was incredible. We have so much to share. We like, do. Oh, my gosh. We met a ton of great people. Amazing we learned people. learned a ton of wonderful information. And Fabulous information. Yeah. Just, oh my gosh. I mean, and, and just just to name some highlights, I mean, we got to hear Dr. Michael Greger speak in person. We got to hear a number of really, really just um, incredible, incredible people. Incredible folks. Yeah. I mean, Aaron Wing did an amazing presentation on resilience and uh and recovery from trauma, just absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. We got to hear from Peter Singer, which yeah. was incredible. Yeah, um, but we don't want to give it all away. No, we don't. We really well, don't. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to stop yeah. naming names. Because we'll just go off on a tangent. We're we really going to tell will. you all about that next week. And and possibly for the next two weeks, because I feel like it. that could be Yeah, a thing. I mean, like, it was four days. Yeah, it was jam-packed. Yeah, it was four days. So we do have a lot to um, share with you about that. We so. do. Um, so let's just move along. All right. Because I'm kind of tired. I don't want this going all night. <laughs> okay. Um, let's, um, I did, I do have a recipe to talk about. She does, and it's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a really so good one. So let's just move to uh, this week's vegan cookbook challenge recipe of the week. This week, I made a recipe out of the Candle Cafe cookbook. This cookbook is recipes from the Candle Cafe. And if you're not familiar with the Candle Cafe and the Candle Cafe kind of franchise, they were one of the oldest, one of the first vegan restaurants in New York City. And they had three different uh, iterations, three different cafes around New York City. All three of them are now closed. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, the last one uh, closed shortly after uh, COVID. Yeah. They they took quite a hit. And then I think there was also some issue with the building they were in and some kind of gentrification was happening. Oh. Anyway, we never got a chance to actually go there. We didn't. And I've heard really great things about it. So that's yep. kind of sad. But this, so I got the cookbook. And I, I'm not sure, but I think this cookbook might be out of print. I believe it is. Yeah, yes. but it is still available from sellers um, on Amazon. Yes. Yeah. Third yeah. party sellers. Yeah. Have it so it's the Candle Cafe cookbook, more than 150 enlightened recipes from New York's renowned vegan restaurant by Joy Pearson, Bart Potenza, and with Barbara Scott Goodman. And the recipe I made this week uh, was a Spanakopita. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love Spanakopita so much. I took much. the recipe from their recipe, which they do not call Spanakopita. They call it phyllo triangle. So I've made Spanakopita in the triangles that way yep. before, yep. but I wanted to make us a full on Spanakopita. A tray of Spanakopita. Yeah. yeah. And I, I have a Spanakopita recipe of my own that I usually make, but this one was really different. Mm hmm. And so I wanted to make it using this one. And I think this turned out really, really well. Oh, it was awesome. Yeah. And this recipe came out before there was the availability of vegan fetas. Right. So you use tofu, mm -hmm. uh, white miso, um, and a couple other things to mimic the feta. Right. And then I did cheat a little bit and put a little bit of follow your heart feta on top when I served it. Oh, clever. Yeah. But uh, I don't. Really, it didn't really need that. No, it really didn't. We had it tonight without the follow your heart. Yes, we did. Yeah, the leftovers. We had the leftovers. Thank yeah. God there were leftovers. Oh, amen for leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, this book has um, really, really awesome recipes in it. Yeah. And and they're not. I mean, some of them. Some of them are a little more in depth, and some of them might have you looking for a couple of ingredients that mm -hmm. you, you do, don't normally buy and might have a hard time finding. But most of them are pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the Candle Cafe cookbook. And uh, you want to talk a little bit about the Spanakopita? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Um, first off, Spanakopita is one of my favorite dishes. Mine and, too. Um, prior to us going vegan, uh, Christine would make her Spanakopita triangles on a fairly regular basis. And especially like, if we had like company coming company or coming if somebody or asked us to, to a party bring a or, dish. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was just so universally popular. Yeah. Um, just, you know, beautiful triangles of phyllo dough with spinach and feta and garlic and onion and just herbs. Herbs. And usually just, dill and... Um, Oh, there's something I I did make one change in this recipe. Okay, but 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 what you were talking about herbs? Yeah, it, it's an herb. That Finish I'm the thought. About. Yeah, I am finishing the thought. Oh, okay. Um, the herbs mm -hmm. I used were dill, which this recipe calls for, mm -hmm. and I used mint. Oh, but they called for basil. We didn't have any basil. Um, no, I couldn't find some. I couldn't find any good basil. Oh, bummer. Plus, I think the basil might overpower some of the other flavors. Oh, possible. Yeah. So basil I'll, is pretty strong. Yeah. So I'll make this again using basil, the basil and, see, and see, see how it goes. Is. Okay. Continue. Okay. I will. This was just a, a beautiful replication, really, um, because we I think we've only tried to make vegan Spanakopita once. I did it one other time. And yeah. um, you were not pleased with the results no. because the vegan feta kind of disappeared. I don't remember what feta it was. But I don't either. It did. It it, it dis not only did it disappear, but it kind of turned back into coconut oil, mm. which gave it like a mushy yeah. consistency. And I, I wish I could remember what brand that was, but I can't remember which brand it was. So I don't either. Yeah, I haven't made it since then. Right. So, yeah, this was my second vegan Spanakopita, and I will definitely make this one oh, again. Oh, yeah. This iteration, you know, using the tofu and the miso mm -hmm. um, as kind of the mirror to the feta was mm -hmm. perfect. Texturally, it was gorgeous. Yep. Um, the flavor of the spinach came through really, really well. Yeah. Um, it was a nicely balanced flavor. Um, and of course, the uh, phyllo dough um, was nice and light and crispy on yeah. uh, on Wednesday night when we first yeah, well, had it. Yeah. Today it was a little soggy, but you, I can't it. <laughs> right, you can't avoid that. <laughs> no. Um, phyllo dough hanging out in the fridge for a few days, yeah. you're going to get that yeah. a little it too much moisture. It was still delicious. Yeah, it was still very, yeah. very good. Yeah, it's just not as crisp as, That's right. as it was That's right. the night I made it. Yeah, but it it was awesome, and I definitely look forward to having this again. Yeah, I do too. So I'll put a link to this cookbook in our show notes if you're interested in taking a look at it. Um, I would recommend it. I, I've made a couple of recipes out of this book, and I like this book a lot. So yeah, let's move on to our main topic. Our main topic is Halloween. I wonder why that is. <laughs> yeah, and we wanted to share with you... Um, i uh, give you some ideas of some Halloween candies that you can give out for trick-or-treaters that are vegan yes. or vegan friendly. Um, and we have some other things to talk about that are, have thing you know, that have something to do with Halloween. Okay. What do you want to talk about first? Let's talk about, do you want to talk about PETA, PETA's recommendations for Halloween candy? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, 
PETA, um, otherwise known as uh, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, um, has an awesome list of vegan candies uh, to try this Halloween. And they start off by also mentioning um, three ingredients that you want to watch out for um, in your candy. And we've talked about some of these ingredients before in our ingredients to watch out for episode, but still um, you of course want to make sure to watch out for gelatin, uh, for carmine color, and for confectioner's glaze. Those are the three things that you're very likely to run into in a lot of uh Potential candies, yeah. Potential Halloween candies, um, so you definitely want to look out for that if you see any of those in an ingredient list. Um, even if they contain no milk or eggs, yeah. you're you're still looking at something that is not vegan friendly. Yeah. What I like about this list is that that they're mainstream candies that you can find in any grocery store. Yeah, because a lot of lists will have um, very vegan specific brands, mm-hmm. um, which are not necessarily readily available everywhere. Yeah, you would have to order ahead of time, right? And- and they can be very expensive. They can be. Like, for example, I know I got really excited when I saw a picture of some Jack's mm-hmm. uh, chocolate frogs. Okay, first yeah. of all, I love the chocolate frog reference because it's obviously a, a Harry Potter inspired thing. Right. Um, but also the fact that they're filled with crunchy peanut butter. Come on. Come on. Now, I can tell <laughs> you that the the Christmas iteration of that particular treat they turn them into snowmen yeah they're delicious for christmas and they have this beautiful crunchy peanut butter inside of them and they're amazing they're good and we we i'm sure we will wind up buying them for each other again this year as we did last year yes as stocking stuffers it's kind of inevitable (laughs) yeah um but that's not a bad inevitability so you know we'll just roll with it um, but yeah, the great thing about the PETA list is that there are a lot of candies on here that are readily available in any store. We're talking if you're going to a Target, a Walmart, a drugstore, a dollar store, yeah. big lots. I mean, anyone is going to have a yeah. lot of these. And when you're buying candy for trick-or-treaters, if you have a lot of kids in your neighborhood, you need a lot of it. That's right. You need so. a lot of candy. And so definitely, I mean, I know we don't actually have trick-or-treaters in our neighborhood, but we'll be spending our Halloween evening um, in Erie with Christine's family. Yeah, we go to my nephew's house because um, him and his girlfriend, fiance, um, live in a neighborhood that has a ton of kids. Yes. So and so we started fun. a new tradition last year of the family all gathering at Trey and Savannah's house for Halloween. Uh-huh. And we get a uh, vegan pizza and we hand out candy and it's really kind of great. Yeah. Yeah. So we're looking forward to that. But of course, if you're trying to accommodate a lot of children in your neighborhood, mm-hmm. Then you really have to be on the lookout for um, some inex- more inexpensive candies. Yeah, you, you it can't, has to be affordable. Yeah, you can't go for the high test stuff. So um, this list is actually really comprehensive um, and has a lot of good options on there. And so I'm just going to go with the um, the readily available brands. Okay. Yeah. So we start off with Smarties. Yeah, so those little tiny discs of uh-huh. sugary candy. Um, I always saved those for last when I was a kid. They really? were they were one of my least favorite, but you know, it was pure sugar, yes. so I still would eat them. Yes, but they always they were always the last thing to go in my Halloween bag. Yeah, I mean, I never had a big thing for Smarties. I've yeah. I've always been a, a chocolate over anything else right. type, but still. So um, also in that realm, okay, now we come to something that I really actually love, um, Swedish fish. Right. Most Swedish fish are in fact vegan. You do want to be careful. Um, there are a few varieties because of course, Swedish fish are no longer just relegated to the the red fish. Right. Um, there are sour Swedish fish. There are tropical Swedish fish. There are just Tons of varieties of Swedish fish, yeah, um, all of which are pretty great, and yeah. uh, but some of them do contain beeswax, so it's it's definitely still worth checking the ingredient list, even though the majority of Swedish fish are in fact vegan. Then we have Airheads. Now I'm not hugely familiar with Airheads. I know they're kind of a taffy type, yeah, I think candy, so, similar to Laffy Taffy, right. Not something that I I have a lot of experience with. And then we have dots. Oh, yeah, dots. Dots. Mm -hmm. Okay, dots for me, like, I just remember them as a movie candy. Right. Yeah. I think that's the only time I've ever had dots is at the movies. Well, at the movies or 
as part of Halloween loot. Yeah, you would get those little little boxes, boxes where there's like yeah. three dots right. in a box. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. And for those of you who don't know, dots dots are uh, very small gumdrops. The difference between them and a, a standard gumdrop is that there's no sugar coating on the outside. Right. Um, it's just the jelly, just like the inside of a gumdrop. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it has more the consistency of a, a Swedish fish. Yeah. Um, than it does a, a traditional gumdrop. But they're the shape of a gumdrop. Yeah. So Bosco, one of our feline friends, I don't know if you can hear him. He just won't shut up. <laughs> he wants into a particular room that he's not allowed in. Yeah. We try to keep a couple of rooms in the house where cats are not allowed. Cat hair free. And I think one of his, but I think he thinks somebody else is in there because one of the others was in there a little while ago. Anyway, hopefully he will stop making that Are you sure that there's not noise. a cat in the room? Yeah. You're positive? Yeah. Because all I've got is Carl back here. Yeah, no. And there's nobody back there. So I'm okay. sorry for interrupting. But you may hear that kind of whiny, beepy, meowy sound in the background. That's what that is. And that's our little ginger. That's Bosco. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where did we leave off dots? Uh, we left off at dots. And so now we have two different types of lollipops, both of which I definitely remember from childhood. Mm -hmm. um, the first were our charms blow pops. Right. Was that the how many licks does it take? No, that's a Tootsie Roll pop. Oh. And Tootsie Roll pops are not vegan because Tootsie Rolls have egg white in them. Right. And blow the difference is blow pops have bubble gum. Have bubble gum okay. in them. Yes. Yes. So... Um, um, Charms Blow Pops are a, a nice kind of big lollipop. Yeah, I used to like those when um, I was a kid. With bubble gum in the center. And then Dum Dums are the little baby ones yeah, that like, come like, in, what, 50 or so flavors. Yeah, they're the most economical. They really are. Yeah. If if you want to get a lot of bang for your buck, yeah. buy Dum Dums. You're not going to be thrilling kids. Let's just say the kids will not be... Telling people to go to your house if you're giving out nothing but dum dums, but but they're good. They are good, and you know you can give out more I mean, than they're, one. They're pure sugar. You know, they're pure sugar and very portable. And you know it's always good that they're not going to melt. They're yeah. it's warm out. They're you know it's there's a lot of advantages to sure. the dum dums. And do you, do you remember what your favorite dum dum was when you were a kid? I think it was root beer. Yep, yeah. yep. Root beer was up there, but mine was cream soda. Oh, yeah. But those were kind of hard to come by, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I loved the cream soda dum-dum. Yeah. It was like hitting the jackpot if you found a cream soda dum-dum. <laughs> it's amazing. I honestly can't tell you if I've ever had a cream soda dum-dum. So. Well, there you go. What's we'll next on the list? Find you one. Well, let's see. Now, uh, again, looking at the uh, just kind of standard brands, we have something that I am not familiar with. Do you know? Chico sticks? Oh yeah, Chico sticks are like, do you know like a butterfinger? Oh the, yeah. The inside of the of a butterfinger, uh -huh. they're like the inside of a butterfinger without any chocolate on them. Oh. They're good. Well, that's kind of fun. Mhm. Mm yeah, I I'm not familiar with those. I don't okay. think I've ever seen them. Huh. Weird. Weird. All right. Well, next time we see them, we'll have to get one just so you can say you've tried a Chico stick. Okay, that's fair. Yep, we can do that. Uh, then we have crybabies. Crybabies are super, super sour. Okay, I'm not um, familiar with hence those. Hence the name. They're kind of like a, it's like a lollipop without the stick. Oh, okay. Kind of a thing. Yeah. And they are super sour and they kind of dissolve into almost this sweet tart. Ooh, that's the reference. They're like a ginormous sweet tart. Oh, okay. I've seen them. Yeah. And they're super, super sour, hence the name. Okay. Because the sour will just bring tears to your eyes. Again, not a lot of experience with those, but for anyone who just wants a hit of incredibly sour, pure sugar. Oh, like, kids love that Lucy stuff. Lucy would love it. Kids kill for that kind of stuff. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? Yes. Um, the next we have is um, something that I was never really into are fireballs. So these are hard candies. I used to like those. Yeah. Really, really yeah, kind of fiery like a, cinnamon. Yeah, like a hot cinnamon jawbreaker kind of thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And so, you know, not not something that I was ever really into, but there you go. 
And then we have uh, juji fruits, which are very similar to dots. They're just in slightly different shapes. Uh huh. And the one thing I never liked about juji fruits is that they used to have a licorice juji fruit. Yeah. Was in, it like a black licorice juji yes, fruit? Yes, it was a black licorice juji fruit okay. in with all of the other flavors. And I did I don't like anise. Black licorice is very polarizing. Yes, it is. I like black licorice. I'm not a fan. You don't like black licorice. No. And so I would I would prefer dots to juji fruits, personally. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Okay. And then we have um, Now and Laters. Yeah, Now and Laters, were they kind of like a taffy too? They're kind of a taffy too. They're hard square things. Super hard squares of taffy. Like you have to just put them in your mouth and kind of suck on them and let them dissolve for a while before you can chew them. Now and Laters. So you eat it now, but you're still eating it later. Right. You get the flavor now, but you get the chewy part later because you have to let it... um, you have to kind of let it dissolve and break down. Otherwise, it'll break your teeth. Yeah. I, I yeah, can't. Yeah, because they're super hard. I can't eat things like that. Yeah. They mess I mean, with my dental work. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. These and are the things you worry about as you get older. I can't eat those candies. Yeah. They're going to pull out my fillings or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yep. So personally, if I were going to go with a taffy type thing, I would uh-huh. definitely go for um, the, you know, something like Airheads or Laffy Taffy um, right. instead. Okay. Yeah, I just think now and later so. I'm not crazy about the texture. Yeah. And then we have another thing that I am not hugely familiar with. I don't know if you are. And that is Zots. Yeah. I've seen them. Okay. But I can't tell you if I've ever had one. All right. And I think that they're also kind of like a, like a jujube kind of thing. Are they really? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So Dots and so, Zots are similar? Yeah. If If you out there know more about what the Zots are and we're completely off base, let us know. Please let us know. Yes, because it's just something I am not even remotely familiar with. And then we have some classics. Um, Now, these, I don't know that I would necessarily put them on a list as Halloween candy because they don't usually come um, in like individually packaged. Yeah, I'm not things, sure if they do or not. Particularly the first one, and that's Brock's lemon drops. Yeah, um, lemon drops, generally speaking, will come in a larger bag, but the lemon drops themselves are not individually not individual. wrapped. Okay, so unless you're going to give out, like, unless you're making treat bags, right? You know, because that's always fun to do. Get a few little things and put together a treat bag, yeah. so you're giving the kids an assortment. Um, then I'm not sure that I would actually recommend the lemon drops. Yeah. And then, of course, we have um, Brock's Star Bright's Peppermint Candy. Now, those are individually wrapped, so you can get a big bag of them yeah. and, you know, toss a handful. In yeah, them. I'm not so sure kids would be thrilled if you put um, peppermint candy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not going to be high on the list, most <laughs> You know, likely. like the after dinner kind of yeah. thing. It's, it's probably not going to be high up on a kid's list. Probably but not. It's, it's a place to start. Yeah. So that's um, some recommendations from PETA. And thank you, PETA. Um, we also have recommendations from Veg News. Yes, we do. What do they have? Let's see. They have Dum Dums, which we already, ta- already talked about. Oh, they have Jolly Ranchers. Right. Now, there are some similarities um, on the Veg News list, mm-hmm. the PETA list, which makes perfect sense. Um, but there are a few additions that we want to address. And the first one is, you got it, the Jolly Rancher. Now, these are the classic Jolly Rancher hard candies. Right. Okay. These are not the Jolly Rancher gummies. Um, and there are many iterations of Jolly Rancher gummies anymore. Um, I do not see them on the list. So No, I think it's just the I, hard ones. Yes. Yeah. I, I believe that the um the gummies have gelatin in them. Yeah. So these are the classic Jolly Rancher hard candies. Okay, great. And apparently thing there's about these. seventeen different flavors. That's right. Loads of flavors. Yeah. Um and again, relatively inexpensive and you can buy them in very large bags. I've seen huge bags of Jolly Ranchers. All right. Then another new one on the list is one of our niece Lucy's favorite, and that is Sour Patch Kids. Oh, Sour Patch Kids. Yes. Okay. So Sour Patch Kids, along with Swedish Fish, of course, are one of the brands of gummy that does not contain gelatin Mm -hmm. um, and does not have any form of confectioner's glaze on it. These are just pure sugar gummies. Yeah. um, Super sour coated in sugar they are really sour they are really sour yes and it's like if i'm in a sour mode like sour patch kids yeah you and lucy could polish it. off a bag of yeah. sour patch kids. yeah <laughs> yeah definitely yeah yeah for sure what's next next we have some fun stuff which i think is really really great for halloween um we have ring pops 
Yeah, I think kids like those. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, who wouldn't? It's candy you can wear. <laughs> Oh, like remember those candy necklaces? Those candy necklaces. Those, I don't think those are vegan, but yeah, I used to like those because you can wear it and chew on it. You can wear it and chew on it. Absolutely. And this is the same thing with the ring pop. You can wear it and suck on it. And again, there's a number of flavors, the most prominent being cherry and blue raspberry. Um, but I do know that there are multiple flavors of those. So Yeah. That's... And, and apparently they do come individually wrapped. Yes, they do. Then... Um, this I think is kind of cool. I don't know if you would actually consider it a like if because you, you're not going to find it in the candy aisle. Um, you're going to find right. it more in the snack school snacks school snack aisle like and lunch snacks right. kind of stuff. And that's fruit by the foot. Right. So fruit by the foot is similar to a fruit roll up, um, but instead of being wide and square, it's very slim and rectangular. Like a tape of fruit. And it's like a tape yeah. of fruit. Yes. And so um, that can be fun. And <laughs> and, and also um, because there is actually some real fruit in fruit by the foot, there's a tiny hit of nutrition <laughs> in there. Right. If that's something that interests you. Very <laughs> for deep, Halloween. deep, deep, deep. Beneath the sugar. Yes. Deep there beneath is the sugar, there is... 0.5% fruit juice. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. The next one on the list kind of cracked me up when I looked at this list because it is the kind of hard candy that your grandmother would always have floating around her purse. It's the Market Pantry Butterscotch. Yeah. You know, the ye with the oh, yellow yeah. wrapper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, interestingly, the picture on the veg news list of the butterscotch discs mm -hmm. also has in the bowl um, uh, yeah. root beer barrels, hard root beer barrels. But which they're not listed on the list. They're so. not listed on the list. And so, but it makes me go, ah, oh, yeah, you are still the root like beer those. barrels vegan too? Because I like those. We'll have to see if we can find some vegan root beer barrels. Yeah, something like that. Those are good. Now, next comes one of my favorites, Laffy Taffy. So I'm thrilled to know that Laffy Taffy, like Airheads, um, is vegan. I have some very fond memories of Laffy Taffy. My friend Amy and I once drove from Colorado back to my house um, in Newcastle, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and uh, we were on a very tight budget. And so for the most part, we, you know, were drinking Mountain Dew and <laughs> eating Laffy Taffy. Oh my God, we were you guys buzzed were on all, sugar. All hopped up on for sugar like and caffeine. Three days. Mountain yes. Dew has a ton of caffeine. I know. Yes. Yeah, so it was like soda and Laffy Taffy. That's and funny. We had a great time. It was an awesome drive. So Amy Benkowski, if you're out there, I just have great, great memories. Of <laughs> yeah. So the drive. fun size Laffy, the fun size Laffy, Laffy Taffy, not the large ones. The large ones are not vegan. Really? Yeah, the regular size ones contain eggs. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and this article says that Laffy Taffy can be a bit polarizing, particularly the banana flavor. What are your thoughts on the banana flavor? I don't have a real opinion on the banana flavor. Yeah. I mean, the banana was... Banana is not one of my favorite flavor profiles. Yeah. So with Laffy Taffy, I would go more towards the the berry, cherry, lemon, you right. know, citrus kind of flavors. Right. Um. I mean, I know I've had banana Laffy Taffy, and I didn't think it was horrendous. So <laughs> I, I honestly can't tell you if I've ever had Laffy Taffy. It's it's not something I'm yeah that gravitate to. And another great thing about Laffy Taffy is each wrapper comes has with a joke. A joke, yeah. Yes, gotta love that. Yeah, but remember, it's just the fun size, not the full size. There you go. Full size contain eggs. Okay, for some reason. Good to know. What's All next? Right. Let's see. Hey, here's a classic. Skittles. 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 Yes. Now, taste of course, the rainbow. Indeed. Taste the rainbow. Now, of course, there are organic brands of um, of Skittles. You can get specifically vegan and organic brands of Skittles. For example, Yum Earth right. um, has their they're giggles. Not, yeah, they're not actual Skittles. They're, they're not actual right. Skittles, but they emulate Skittles. I've tried those and those are really good. The giggles are great. Yeah, yeah I really like them. But I actually, they're also probably three times as expensive. <laughs> they they are. Yeah. Yes. And so I actually like giggles better than Skittles. Right. But um, again, if you're going for economy, um, Skittles is the way to go. Um, the only unfortunate thing is that a lot of times to get Skittles in Halloween, the little Halloween size packages, mm -hmm. you have to buy them in a bag with oh. other candies that are not vegan. Like a variety pack. Like a variety pack. Okay. So that's 
that's one disadvantage there and something right. to, to look out for. Next up is individually wrapped strawberry Twizzlers. Now, Twizzlers, of course, are vegan mm-hmm. all the way around. Every, I believe every iteration of Twizzlers. I think, I think you're correct. Is yeah. vegan. And we know that there are many of them. There's the pull and peel. There's different flavored ones. I've never yeah. found a flavor I liked better More than, than the original. the regular. Yeah. yeah, me too. And of course, movie Twizzlers are always the best. Yeah, I don't know. It's a different uh, quality. Yeah. It's like when you go to a restaurant, the quality of the Beyond Burger is different than what you buy in the store. It's elevated Agreed. Agreed. a bit. Yeah. I feel like the Twizzler that goes to movie theaters <laughs> is the same way. Or maybe it's just because you're paying $20 for them. Well, there's that. <laughs> yeah. Your brain is like, I paid 20 I know they're not yeah. $20, but you pay a lot more. So maybe yes. your brain is like, these days better because I paid more. Yeah. But Twizzlers are also one of Christine's favorites. They they are. I'm not a huge candy person, but I do like, um, I do like a Twizzler every I, now and I've, again. Yeah. Twizzlers yeah. have made their way under the Christmas tree in they have. different iterations they have i think both you and my sister linda have gotten me that tub the tub of twizzlers, of twizzlers. Yeah. yeah and i know we did the the like the oh, three the super... foot the yard long yeah twizzlers yeah. And yeah so so much sugar so much sugar. i really like this next one on the list all right go for it um and i used to like these when i was a kid and i think they changed this now um it, the candy is called fun dip Mm-hmm. And it's basically just a package full of flavored sugar. Yes. And with it a used, sugar stick. Well, it used to. Does it still come with the sugar stip, stick? I think maybe yes. it... Oh, it does? Yes. Yeah. I used to like that sugar stick. Who doesn't like just a stick of sugar? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, as a kid. Yeah. I used to love those. Mm-hmm. You'd lick the stick and stick it in there. Yes. They've updated the packaging, but the contents are the same. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Yeah. Cherry Yum, Raz Apple flavors. Yeah, Raz kids. Apple, huh? Yeah, that's what it says. All right. Yep. All right. Kids love those. Okay. Now, I'm going to drop down here um, to a product that is a tiny step uh, healthier than some of the things we're talking about. And those are Annie's um, Bunny Fruit Snacks. Oh, yeah. The bunny, bunny Fruit Snacks. Yes. Yes. Okay. So these are a bit lower sugar than a lot of the candies we've been talking about. Um, they are similar, you know, to a, a gummy. We mm-hmm. all know what fruit snacks are like. And right. um, they do come in Halloween packaging. Yeah. So for Halloween, you get bunnies and bats, which I think are just adorable. Bunnies and bats. Yes. Bunnies and bats. And they are, of course, organic and vegan. Um, Annie's will also do... Um, um, Halloween bunny grams, so little teeny bunny graham crackers oh. um, in snack packs. So that's something to look out for as well. If you, you know, if you want to give the kids a snack that's not pure sugar, pure junk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you heard of this one, Gushers? I have heard of these. It says it's a 90s throwback candy. So if you out there have heard of Gushers, let me know. Yeah, Fruit Gushers. Um, I've heard of them. I'm not sure I've ever had them. But what they are is essentially a gummy. They're another gummy. They're another gummy, but there's liquid in the center. Oh, that's why they call them Gushers. the Gushers. Yes. Okay. Fruit Gushers, they're Fruit called. Fruit Gushers, they're called. And so um, can't talk much about them. But they are available and they are vegan. <laughs> How about this next one? Have you heard of this next one? Go go squeeze. Go go squeeze. I haven't heard of this particular squeeze, but I actually think it's great that these kinds of products are making this list. Um, kind of the squeezable applesauce. Um, yeah, type and it, come, snacks. it comes in all kinds it comes of different in a flavors. Pouch. Yeah, it comes in a pouch. Um, they are shelf stable. You don't need to refrigerate them. Yeah. They can go into kids' lunch boxes really, really easily. Yeah. And there's a number of different flavors. Um, Go Go Squeeze has um, apple, apple cinnamon, apple strawberry, apple banana, and a special Halloween pack in Raspberry Rush, which sounds good to me. That would be my choice right there, a Raspberry <laughs> Rush, and Berry Madness. I'm skipping over Mama Chia Squeeze because I don't think that that is a mainstream mainstream snack that you can find in any store. Um, it's like a, I think it's like a chia, squeezable chia pudding. Yes. Yes. And uh, in the article, it says that the parents would probably steal them from the kids anyway. Um, mm. But if you squeeze Gooch down. It's one of my very favorite give blood snacks. 
Oh, gosh. Here we, we go. <laughs> it's mini Oreos. <laughs> yes. Christine only gives blood as an excuse to have Oreos. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> but it is nice that they do offer us mini Oreos. Yeah. 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 I always bring my own snack after giving blood because I don't want Oreos. And Oreos are usually the only vegan snack on yeah. the table. Yeah. Yeah. But I think kids would like those. They're little bags. Yes. And they contain the teeny tiny little Oreo cookies. Yes. The most evil cookie on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> There's one on this list that I don't think belongs on here. What's that? Fig Newtons. First Why of all. Why do you think it doesn't belong on there? Well, do they come in like an individual? Um, they do come in snack sizes. Oh, that do they? You, yeah. For lunch boxes and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. I guess they do. Yeah, absolutely. I guess they do. Um, I think that would also be one of the last things a kid would eat out of their Halloween probably pouch or bag or whatever their bucket um, is the Fig Newton. Yeah, I agree. Um, but again, I love Fig Newtons. I do too. Um, my favorite Newtons though were um, they had cranberry right Fig Newtons back in the day, and they were nice and tangy. Yeah. Oh, they were really good. They don't make those anymore. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't looked for them because we don't generally buy cookies. Yeah, but um, I know that they. I, I used to like them quite a bit. They were a regular purchase in my mom's shopping cart yeah. when I was a teenager. What's next? Yeah. Um, next, we have, again, one of Lucy's favorites, animal crackers. Yeah, the little mini boxes of the animal crackers. Box, I yes. think that's a great idea for Halloween. I do, too. I, I remember, I seem to remember Lucy carrying around a box of animal crackers yeah. like a purse. I used to, I remember. I think I, just about every kid does that I at totally some point. remember doing that as a kid. Yeah. My grandmother, when we would, she would take me grocery shopping with her mm -hmm. at the S&M food, uh, not food stamp, the S&M green stamp store. Because uh -huh. she would save, put the green stamps, is anybody else out there oh, old in enough the, in the book? to remember the green stamps? And then I would go with her and we would um, trade in her green stamp for groceries. And I, she would always buy me one of those little boxes of the animal crackers, mm -hmm. and I, too, would carry it around, around like a little purse. Like a little purse and yeah. eat your animal crackers. Yep. And, yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's pretty cute. That's pretty cute. What's next? Um, next, we have something that, again, I'm not sure would be a huge hit in the, no. uh, the jack-o'-lanterns of most trick-or-treaters. No, but, um, but it, if you want to give something that the parents can eat, this, this one would work. This would work. Again, um, a little bit of a nod towards health, and those are Lara bars. Yeah. Um, most flavors of Lara bars are vegan. It's In fact, all flavors of Lara bars might be vegan. Yeah, um, I really don't know in this article. Yeah, this article does doesn't say that there's any sort of exception. So I have to assume that all flavors that they are. Yes. Now in the picture, they're showing several flavors. They're showing a strawberry chocolate chip, a peanut butter chocolate chip, an almond butter chocolate chip, mm -hmm. and a chocolate chip brownie, all of which sound delightful to me. Yeah, I, I would eat it. <laughs> yes. And they're also mentioning flavors such as cherry pie, apple pie. Um, so these are fruit and nut bars. Do be careful with allergies on these. Yeah. Um, you know, always wanting to be mindful of of allergens. Yeah. That some kids out there will certainly have yep. nut allergies. Next on the list is something I didn't know existed, and it's, I don't know about this idea. It's uh, Handy Snacks Oreos Cookie Sticks in Cream Dip. So <laughs> what it is, is it's a stick, it's the Oreo cookie part in stick form. And then it's kind of like a snack pack kind of thing where the other half of the thing is filled with nothing but the Oreo cream. And you're supposed to like scoop it out with the cookie. See, I think you would love this. Uh, no, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I really do. I think if, I think you're skeptical about it right now because it's not <laughs> the traditional Oreo, but yeah, I think. I'm a purist. I mean, not, I would never buy these, but if I did. For some reason, I have a feeling you would you would like them. Yeah, I mean they probably taste good. Yeah, um, it's just so much sugar, and and you don't need any more of the filling than is already in the like. I'm not about the double stuffs and all that. They even have like triple stuffs or mega stuffs or something Seriously? like that. Yeah, I've lost track um, of. I do like Oreos. how this article calls these um, an interactive version. <laughs> And so they are. Although I have to admit, Oreo is probably one of the most interactive cookies out there. I, I don't. I'm not a twister. You know, you twist. You twist it off. I'm not really a twister. You eat the center. You dip the chocolate. You can. Like, you, you can. Know. You can make a huge procedure out, out of, of an Oreo. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. 
Yep, for sure. All right. And next we're back to bars. So here we have cliff bars. Um, I know I like a good cliff bar. It's a great thing to toss in your backpack if you're hiking. Yeah, they're good um, for hiking. They they're, are. They're very um, healthy tasting. Though. They are very healthy tasting. I don't think tasting. most younger children would appreciate them. Yes. Yes. They are a hint of sweet because they often um, contain fruit, dried fruit, uh, yeah. particularly dates. But um, they're definitely not the profile that most uh most kids are looking for. No, and if you're Halloween going for affordability, a cliff bar is not the way to go. Oh, no, definitely not the way to go. But if you scroll down a little bit, mm-hmm. apparently Cliff does make a kid version. Cliff Kid Z Bar. Oh. Which I have never seen before. Mm-hmm. But it could just be I'm not looking for food for kids. Well, that's true. But also, you know, it's If you'll notice in the listing, it says pick up a few boxes. So, again, it's not really going to be um, the most economical choice. Yeah. Um, So if that's a concern, uh, again, Cliff Bars would probably not be too high up on the list. Uh Uh-huh. All right. This next one is one of my favorites, and I'm really glad that it's on here because we do talk so much about candy when it comes to Halloween. Yeah. But I absolutely love one of the things that I really used to like getting are bags of popcorn. Right. And so here we have Angie's Boom Chicka Pop Sweet and Salty Kettle Boom Corn. Chicka Boom Chicka Pop. And it doesn't have to be the sweet and salty kettle corn. It just be the, the regular the one. The regular popcorn works. Yeah. Um, my parents... When I was younger, they would get, um, and I'm not even sure if this brand still exists, but they would get, my dad would go out and get cases of the small bags of, it wasn't Lay's. Frito-Lay. No, no, the one that had an owl on it, potato chips. Um, I don't remember the brand and I don't think the brand still exists. But yeah, I used to, I Mm -hmm. always thought that was, I mean, we ate uh, a lot of them ourselves. Sure. (laughs) Yeah. And I wish I could remember, I know my sister Linda, tell me what the, the brand of those potato chips I, I, was. I can see the packaging yeah. and I can't remember the name. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Anywho, yeah. I like the idea of giving a kid a little bag of a salty snack. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, popcorn again is a little on the healthier side. Yeah. You get some fiber, not as high caloric density. Yeah. Especially this Boom Chicka Pop is pretty, pretty yeah. healthy. And also, also vegan um, is Skinny Pop. Yeah. Um, we're a big fan of Skinny Pop popcorn. Um, and I think, did we we finish the case I bought you for your birthday? I think we did. We did? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, little bags. Little bags. Little snack bags of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but how about popcorn balls? Do people still do that? Um, actually, they are on the list. Oh. They are on the I list. I don't think most parents, unless they get them from somebody they know really well, mm-hmm. would allow their child to eat a homemade popcorn ball. Right. Well, I no, know, no, no, no. These are a packaged popcorn oh, ball a po- that are on the list. One. Yes. We used to, when we were kids, there were a couple houses in our neighborhood where they would give you a homemade popcorn ball right. wrapped, wrapped in saran wrap. <laughs> yes. And then I remember... We never wanted them. Well, no. I mean, I, I do remember being, I don't know, maybe a preteen, um, something, I mean, around that age, I seem to remember popcorn balls becoming like kind of scary because it was thought that people were putting razor blades in them. And so, you know, yeah. But um, on this list, there is a um, packaged popcorn ball and this is the Kathy K Foods popcorn ball. Um, And... Oh yeah, I see them now. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's Um, funny. Now, Personally, I never enjoyed a popcorn ball as much as I enjoyed loose popcorn. Yeah. I would much rather just have the popcorn. Uh, agreed. Yeah. But we skipped over a couple of things looking for the popcorn ball. Yeah. Well, um, I do like the idea of um, the single serve pretzel snacks. Yeah. And apparently Oots mm-hmm. brand makes ones that are like Halloween branded, which is cool. Yes. Halloween bats and jacks. Yeah. Single serve pretzel snacks. They are shaped like bats and jack-o'-lanterns. Yes. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Definitely a thumbs up for that one. The next one I'm not, I, I just think is kind of silly. Um, Kool-Aid jammers. What, what is it? Okay. Kool-Aid jammers are like these little plastic bottles filled with Kool-Aid. Oh, that's dumb. We don't need more plastic in the world. We don't need more plastic in the world. Yeah, don't buy those. And um, I mean, I mean Kool-Aid. Ah. 
<laughs> well, again, it's just pure sugar. It's just pure sugar. Yeah. And then we have another gummy treat on this list, which are Surf Sweets Organic Spooky Shapes. They come in pumpkins, witch hats, and skulls. Um, I don't know what the flavor profile is. I imagine they're fruity, um, but I have no experience of these. But still, you, you really can't go wrong with a gummy snack. Yeah, no, I know you love the gummy snacks. I do. I mean, hey, holidays are coming up. Bring on some holiday Scandinavian swimmers. <laughs> Right. From Trader Joe's. Those are my favorites. They're now, so good. Do we want to talk about some of the vegan brands of Halloween candy that there are out there? Well, I don't know, because I think most vegans out there will be aware of, you know, Yum Earth and Justin's and yeah. Jack's and, you know, all of the, um, oh, and No Way. and Yeah, No Way. Um, I can tell you uh, in our area, in Western New York, if you're looking for those um Particularly because of the allergen thing. Yep. Uh, the vegan grocery store does carry the, all the allergen-free yep. versions of all of those brands. Um, the No Way and all that stuff. Yep. So if you're looking for that stuff, uh, go to the vegan grocery store in North Tonawanda and, and pick some up. She's got a huge selection of Halloween candies. Awesome. What else do we want to talk? Oh, wanted to talk about some fun costume ideas that you were talking about. Okay, this is hysterical. Like seriously, I have to. So earlier today, Christine sent me this article um, that comes from an article from World of Vegan, written by Gina House, and she does what she is calling the Fangtacular Guide to Celebrating a Beautiful Hallow's Eve. <laughs> Um, so I love the name already, and the illustrations in this article are just adorable. I really, really do love them. Yeah, like the first one is a, a obviously hand-drawn image of a piglet in a ghost costume, yeah. and then Mama Pig is wearing a witch costume, and the piglet is saying, Mommy, is it safe? And Mama Pig is saying, they won't find you today, dear. Yeah. <laughs> it's just Aww. absolutely adorable. It's like, adorable and kind of sad yes, at the same time. Yes, but so, so, so cute. Um, and one of the lists that, that she has okay, on top of um, candy and some traditions like trick-or-treating, campfires, decorating pumpkins, corn mm -hmm. mazes, and hayrides. Yeah, she has also some uh, fun vegan food recipes. Fun vegan food recipes. In this blog. So um, I'm going to share a link in the show notes to this so that you you all can check it out. Yes, for sure. But my favorite part of the article was honestly, what should I be for Halloween this right. year? And to, you know, kind of maintain your your vegan ethic or to show your vegan pride as part of your Halloween costume, um, there are some, you know, obvious ones, by all means, Go trick-or-treating as your favorite fruit or vegetable. Be an apple, be an avocado, yeah. or a banana, a bunch of grapes, carrot, peas in a pod, corn on the cob. Can't go wrong with any of that. You can also go with uh, more specifically vegan foods like a block of tofu or a bottle of nooch. I thought a the bottle of nooch was funny. bottle of nooch is funny. Block of tofu, easiest costume ever. Get yourself a big box. <laughs> paint it white and cut holes in it for your arms and head and put on the front <laughs> tofu right and there you go you're done um but the ones that i'm really psyched about there were two categories that i just loved and those were your vegan hero and your favorite plant-based doctor <laughs> and so of the vegan heroes and there are a few listed here um but i would definitely choose to go as earthling ed <laughs> I think that would be great. Would people know who you were, though? Well, no, Seriously. but I mean, that's not the you'd point. You'd have to, like, wear a sign. A name or... tag. Hi, my name is Earthling Yeah, Head. you'd have to have a name tag. That would be fine. Um, and of the plant-based doctors, there is just no question. It would have to be Dr. Gregor. That would be fun. You could get a little bald wig. A little bald wig. Yep. And, and a beard. You know, I've already got the glasses. Yep. And, you know, need a doctor's coat. And, yeah, yeah a but suit and a doctor's coat. Suit and, and a doctor's set. coat. And there it is. Yep. You know, Dr. Gregor, bring it on. Um, but I just <laughs> thought that was amazing that they're actually listing, you know, Dr. Gregor. Dr. Barnard, Colin Campbell, um, you know, he goes Milton Mills, you know, any yeah. any of the high profile uh, vegan doctors and just 
Like, I think that's amazing. You said Dr. Gregor. That reminds me. We have to shout out one of our listeners that we ran into in D.C. Oh, my gosh. Yes, we do. Who does an amazing Dr. Gregor impersonation. It, James. James. Oh, my God. James, if you're out there. That was so funny. We were talking about Dr. Gregor speaking. And James says, I wonder if he'll say and put it to the test. Yes. Yes. He was like, what's the over under on how many times Dr. Gregor will say, let's put, put it, it to, to the, the test. test. <laughs> and it was a fabulous <laughs> imitation. Now, it the was. thing is, Dr. Gregor did not say. He didn't. Put it to the test. Yeah. Once. He did Not once. Not once. Um, but it was, his, his presentation was amazing. But yeah. let's not get into that. No, I'll... James, that was really hysterical. Yeah, James, that was fabulous. And it was so, so, so cool cool to to meet you and it was just randomly was. in a workshop so random and we were introducing ourselves to other people and james like james is like oh yeah i listen to you it's nice to have faces to put with the voices yeah like so so cool so thanks for listening james yes thank you james for listening it was awesome meeting you it was um also if you want to go as a human being um a different type of human being they also have plant-based athletes um i of course out of this list pulled rich roll immediately um because i'm sorry if and if you can pull off a rich roll costume yeah go you yeah because there's no way in a million years Tell I people could pull who Rich Roll, Rich for the Roll. people that don't know who Rich Roll is. For those of you who don't know Rich Roll is, okay, he is an endurance athlete. Um, he is one of few people who have done um, a challenge. I can't remember the name of the challenge itself, but essentially it's it like is... It's like an Iron Man. It's, well, no, it's five Iron Mans. Oh, right. On five Hawaiian islands right. in less than a week. It's insane. It's insane and amazing. And so this is just... An incredibly fit, incredibly lean yeah, he human is a being. Super athlete. He's a super athlete. He's got a great podcast, by the way. If you're ever looking for other podcasts, I definitely recommend the Rich Roll podcast. Um, but I would love to be Rich Roll for Halloween, but I could never pull it off. Yeah. Like I could just never look that good. You were talking about <laughs> Not to not to veer off the subject, but you were talking about the cute comics that are on this on this page. Oh yes, my favorite one so far is uh, s uh, surrounding a cauldron. There is a turkey, uh, a pig, and a cow, and they're all wearing witches' hats, and they're stirring this cauldron. And it says, "Don't worry, we only use cage-free children." <laughs> there's like a little <laughs> arm sticking out. <laughs> um, yes, that is that is cute. Yeah, that is cute. Yeah. But so I just absolutely love that list. And um, just to go back to the costumes for just a second. Yeah. What, um, else, what else did you like? Hang on, there? on. I had one other thing. One other thing. Where to go? Oh, yes. Of course, you can go with uh, silly costumes, you know, a bottle of sriracha, a bucket of popcorn, a slice of vegan pizza, um, your favorite vegan coffee shop beverage yeah. you know anything you like could go that. as a vegan chicken nugget yes you <laughs> that could. would be fun you could. just get a big thing of foam and and, and make yourself a nugget yeah yes now it is um important as you're putting your costume together to remember that certain things that you may um be drawn to um may not be vegan so when especially if you're making your own costume um be aware that uh, of materials that you're using. You want right. to make sure they are animal product free. So just as in your clothing, you would want to avoid things like wool, leather, silk, suede, mm -hmm. or anything else that contains animal skin. Yeah. Um, in your accessories, you definitely want to stay clear of pearls, shells, animal bone, ivory, or animal hair. Right. Um, when choosing your, uh, when choosing wigs or jewelry or anything right. like that. And then do be aware that most commercial Halloween makeup is neither vegan nor cruelty free. No kidding. Yeah. That's good. So to know. if you need, if you are committed to makeup and I know some people go absolutely bonkers yeah. on the makeup, um, consider buying new makeup from a vegan friendly makeup company and there are a few of those that we can mention and so we've got stuff like uh, seraphine botanicals bodyography olive and m or veda um, pie skincare luna nectar 
uh, London Town Vegan Nail Lacquer Marmor Metamorphosis. That's a tongue twister. That is a mouthful. Yeah, it is. Um, R and Company Purology. So if you're not going for specialty makeup, which is going to be hard to find in vegan form, right. really hard to find in vegan form, yeah. um, you know, of course, use the co- vegan cosmetics that you already use. Um, or if you do need to purchase, then please consider purchasing a vegan brand. Yeah. That's yep. good to know. Yeah. Uh, there's another thing in this um, article that I thought was kind of good to mention for people who don't want to give candy to children. Uh, there are other things that you can give out like pencils and erasers or art supplies, coloring books, stickers, yay stickers, mini toys, kids like mini toys, mm-hmm. uh, fruit snacks uh, or mini granola bars, mini flashlights. That's a great idea. That is. And you I can get that. those led flashlights in like 10 packs. Yeah, you can. Um, a packet of seeds to encourage them to garden. In I think the spring. that's pretty awesome. Uh, and bookmarks. Yeah. All good things. Yeah. yeah. All good things if you don't want to encourage the um, unadulterated consumption of sugar. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Although, you know, they're not your kids. So you're just <laughs> <stressing> them <laughs> You don't have to deal with them bouncing off the walls. So yeah. why not? Go all out. Give yeah. them the, give them the, uh, the fun dip. Yeah. Right? Why not? Go for it. Yeah. So that's just a few things. Um, vegan Halloween-ish that... That we thought would be fun to talk about. Yeah. It's a good time. Yeah. And we uh, were, uh, you know, I don't want to run long, but Sam met one of our heroes. Yes, I did. At the uh, at the summit. Well, this, I mean, this I, I got to meet several of yeah. my heroes, which was really kind of amazing. You know, just being in the same room as Dr. Gregor and Peter Singer and Miyoko yeah. Shinner and yeah. like so many other amazing Yeah, we, um, we got activists. to talk to and, and meet some really important people in the movement. Yeah. Um, but Sam got got to meet and uh, bought a book from... Oh, Mel- no, not, not one. Four. Well, yeah. Yes. But this particular book, and she, of course, she already read. As- I yes, mean, I have completed one the, of the books. In the last that two I read. days, read, read yes. the whole thing. And of course, you know, James, when he saw me buying four books, he said to Christine, um, Aren't you supposed to stop her from doing that? Yes. I'm like, <laughs> so, Oh, James, I forgot. You, you know, know all, all our secrets. secrets. You know all of our secrets. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty great. Yeah. But yes, um, I. I got to meet and have a brief conversation with, and of course, hear a wonderful lecture from uh, Dr. Melanie Joy, who is a particular hero of mine. Mm -hmm. Um, She is a psychologist, longtime vegan advocate, and organizational head of the Center for Effective Vegan Advocacy or CEVA. And um, I know I've mentioned this before, but if you're interested in... um, enriching your advocacy skills and the language that you use in your advocacy. I highly recommend taking her um, her course on effective vegan advocacy on the SIVA website. And uh, it's very inexpensive. If you have the means, it's only a $25 uh, charge for the entire course, which I think that's is amazing. Yeah, no, that's, that's incredible. And um, also there is an option to do the course for free. Oh, okay. So you can choose not to pay for it if you do not have the means to pay for it. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. So anyway, I I bought four of Dr. Joy's books at uh, the uh, Ava Summit Mm -hmm. because all four of the ones that she was selling happened to be ones I had not yet read. So I was very, very, very excited about that. And one of them um, was, is a, is a very, very slim volume and it's called the vegan matrix. Yeah. So let's, let's jump into it. The vegan matrix. And this is uh, our second installment of Sam's books in review. Okay, so the full title of The Vegan Matrix is The Vegan Matrix, Understanding and Discussing Privilege Among Vegans to Build a More Inclusive and Empowered Movement. And what I love about this book, okay, this is assuming immediately that all vegans um, and anyone involved in a social justice movement of any kind is someone who is at heart um, kind and open and compassionate and in it for the victims 
of whatever movement we're talking about. Yeah, well, so, I think that's a reasonable assumption. Yes, I think that's a fantastic yeah. assumption. And that where a lot of times uh, social justice movements can go wrong is in the language that people use. Mm -hmm. And so it creates divisions. And um, so in this book, uh, Dr. Joy uses uh, two matrices primarily. She uses the matrix of carnism, um, which is the carnism is a, a system of oppression which basically decides that we eat some animals and not others. Right. Okay. A little different from speciesism, but, uh, and more specific than speciesism. And then of course, sexism, um, which I learned through this book has been an issue within the vegan movement. Mm -hmm. And I personally was not aware of that. Um, I think it's because we are relatively new to yeah, and we're we're in, we're kind of in a bubble where we are. So yes. um, we haven't uh, actually. The summit was like our first foray into large groups of people from the movement. So, yes, yes, yeah, and and many different organizations. So this was a real eye opener for me um, that sexism has been and continues to be to some degree an issue. Uh, within the vegan movement. And of course, we know that uh, racism also can be an issue within the vegan movement. And I think that that's something that is universal among um, social justice movements. Um, and so this book looks at different systems of oppression. It looks at the language that um, is attached to those systems of oppression. It looks at ways to counteract those systems of oppression through language. Um, and it's it's really just fantastic. So Yeah, I'm looking forward to reading it. Yeah, you're going to have to. I'm going to make you read this one, actually. <laughs> you know, I know that reading puts Christine to sleep. It can. But um, it can. I, I really think you need to read this yeah, one. I have to be sitting up, you know, with lots of light and, you know. Yes. And so the great thing about this book is you do not need to be an academic to understand it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you get into the realm of social psychology, right. um, books can feel a bit academic and a bit weighted, a yeah. bit heavy, even a bit stuffy. Um, that is not the case with this. Um, Dr. Joy's tone is very conversational. Mm -hmm. um, she uses very straightforward language. And she explains essentially what privilege is, who has it in a number of different situations, um, because the vast majority of people on the planet will both have some degree of privilege and some degree of oppression, depending on the... Most people, yes. Yes, most people will have, will be aware of both sides of the coin. Okay. Um, and so, but really, really talking about how important it is for vegans to be aware of their privilege, um, to be aware of systems of oppression that exist, that mm -hmm. coincide with the vegan movement, that there are people within the vegan movement, particularly um, people of color, particularly the LGBTQ community, mm -hmm. particularly women, particularly transgendered folk. Um, particularly um, those of different abilities um, who are to some degree marginalized within the movement uh, simply because of those other things, not because of their veganism, not right. that their veganism is in any way particularly different yeah, or but differently But because they're motivated. marginalized in other in aspects other ways. of their lives, they also can be marginalized within the vegan movement. Yeah. Yes. And so she explains this beautifully. She offers um, a lot of advice on how to not only sharpen your awareness of that, but, okay. um, but how to relate to your privilege. So for example, the obvious one in the room is Christine and I are white. Right. Okay. We are both white. And that is one of the, I mean, probably outside of just human privilege. Right. Um, white privilege is probably, I don't know. It's either white privilege or male privilege, privilege that comes next. And I'm um, human, human, male, male, white. Is that your white male? Okay. All right. So um, but in my, that's just in my your opinion. personal opinion, so, right? If anyone's offended by that, it's just my opinion. <laughs> yes, but anyway, 
white privilege is certainly up there in the top three without question. Yeah. Yeah. Human is number one and, and white is definitely in the top three. So, um, it's not about, we, we can't actually get rid of our white privilege because we can't not be white. Right. There is no way for us to change that. What we can look at, what we can change, what we can be aware of is our relationship to our privilege and how we use our privilege. Are we using it to prop up systems of oppression or are we using it to counteract okay. systems of oppression? And it gives a lot of examples and a lot of advice on how to um, relate to your privilege in a way that is healthy and positive and productive. Okay. As opposed to um, destructive, destructive. And, and propping up um, these other these systems of oppressions that we want to eradicate. Okay, yeah. So it is a phenomenal book. Like I said, it's a very slim. It sounds like volume. a book. It sounds like a book. Sorry to interrupt you, but it does sound like a book that everyone should read. <laughs> it really is, and that was another thing that I thought remarkable about it. The title is The Vegan Matrix, but really I didn't feel like I was reading a book about veganism. Right. I felt like I was reading a book about systems of oppression, about right. language and about I about the really, human experience. About the human experience, yeah. and I really appreciated that. So, um I would recommend this to everyone, vegan or not. Mm -hmm. Like I'm actually considering um, I'm going to be teaching a class on art and activism next semester, which I'm very excited for. And I am in the process of creating right now. And let me tell you, the AVA Summit gave me so many ideas. Yeah. It's just amazing. But I'm actually considering requiring this book as part of the reading list. And I was only going to require one book, but I'm really considering adding this to the required yeah, reading. It's not a huge book. so It's not huge. It's quite small um, and it can be purchased relatively inexpensively. So I, I don't think the students will mind. Yeah. Um, my only, my only hesitation in mm -hmm. requiring it is that vegan is in the title. Right. The and, vegan matrix. Right. And because um, the, the class that I'm teaching is not going to be specifically, specifically vegan. Yeah. It's going to be directed towards all social justice movements. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't want to, to put the kids off or to think that I'm pushing a vegan agenda right. within a class, which would be incredibly inappropriate. Yeah. I can, I can understand why you wouldn't want to use it. Yes. Yeah. So it may be that I just use parts of it and recommend it to them and, and recommend and it, let, put it on the recommended list. And tell list. them what you just said, that this can be applied to whatever type of activism you're yes. involved in or you want to be involved in Absolutely. or whatever, whatever type of human interaction you want to be involved in. Oh, so. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And so, yes, I highly recommend this. Pick it up if you can. Um, the Vegan Matrix by Dr. Melanie Joy, PhD. Um, it is well worth the read. Like I said, I started it this morning when we boarded our plane mm -hmm. um, and I finished it a couple of hours ago. If you are a voracious reader like myself, it will only take you a couple of hours um, to read it in its entirety. But I already know that I'm going to go back through it a second time mm -hmm. and mark it up like crazy. Yeah. And, you know, it's going to be covered in highlighter and yeah. um, all of that good stuff. Yeah. So. We'll, and we'll link to that in the show notes if you want to pick up a copy for yourself. Awesome. All right. Let's move on to housekeeping because we're over an hour. You know, we try to keep How it. How do we do that? It just happens. We went on about candy. <laughs> we did. Well, that's easy. Yeah, that's kind of easy to oh, do. The so. candy. Candy. Um, housekeeping. Oh, hey, would you like to read a review from the Apple Podcast app? Hey, I can do that if okay. my iPad will respond to my poking thing. <laughs> there we go. Yes, I would love to read a review. All right. And we are here, here we have a review from Apple Podcast. And, uh, of course, it does include Christine's much desired five stars. Five, all five of them. All five of them. And this is coming from the Vegan Roadie. So we know that this is our friend, Dustin Harder. Dustin Harder. Yes. The Vegan Roadie. The if vegan you're not roadie. familiar with Dustin Harder, he has a number of fantastic cookbooks and also has a vegan food and travel series that you can watch for free on YouTube. Just uh, YouTube, just put in the search bar, The Vegan Roadie, and watch his series. It's really fun. And you really need to watch um, 
his episode on Italy just to hear him say, a, a vegan, vegan cone. cone. It's yeah. awesome. He went to an like, ice cream place and was extremely excited, not only that, the, that they had some vegan ice cream, but they had vegan cones. cones. And so yes. I just cracked up the yeah, first time He's very time I enthusiastic. Yes, it's awesome. <laughs> so yes. So, so what, Dustin, what thank you. What does the vegan roadie say? The vegan roadie says, uh, unique perspective from Christine and Sam in an easy to listen to conversational format. Fun vegan tidbits start to finish. Thanks, Dustin. Thank you, Dustin. Awesomeness. We try to give fun vegan tidbits. We do. We do. Okay. Um, we're still holding our fundraiser for Food Not Bombs sure. at our Buy Me a Coffee site. That is buymeacoffee.com backslash cucumbers. And I wanted to thank my sister for making a donation Woo-hoo! to our Food Not Bombs fundraiser. Thank you so much, Linda. Go, I Linda. I really appreciate that. That's awesome. Um, join our Patreon the link is always in the show notes. You can become a patron on our Patreon page and uh, get access to some cool stuff and also get some cool merch from us. Yep. And so support ch- the podcast. Yeah. So check that out if you'd like to support us. Uh, all the monies from that will go to improving the show yes. so that we can reach more great, great people like you. What else is on there? Um, well, you've already talked about getting this week's cookbook and that the link will be in the show notes. And also we will link to uh, this week's book in review. Again, that mm-hmm. is The Vegan Matrix by Dr. Melanie Joy. Yep. And our next event is the Halloween and Anniversary Celebration Pop-Up Market at the Vegan Center in Tonawanda. That's October 29th from 11 to 3. We are super excited. There's going to be um, about a dozen vendors, yeah, so that's, a dozen plus vendors, it's growing which is huge. and growing. Yeah. Yes, there's going to be food by Buffalo's V-Spot, which we are so excited for because we... Her food is fantastic. It's amazing. And we did not get a chance to visit her at the Western New York Veg Fest. We were so busy. We didn't get a chance to. Yeah. So, and she was so busy. The line was was. unbelievable. So um, we are very much looking forward to that. Uh, So if you're in the Buffalo area and you want to support some local vegan businesses, uh, come on out to the Vegan Center on October 29th. Yep. And then next week we will be talking about the Animal and Vegan Advocacy Summit that we went to this weekend in Washington, D.C. So that should be a rocking good time. Yes, it should. (laughs) All right. We're wrapping up this Halloween episode. I hope you all have a spooky, spooky good Halloween. (laughs) Watch for uh, ghouls and goblins. Of course. Yes. And we will uh, talk at you next Tuesday. Sure will. Thanks for listening. Have a great week, everyone. (laughs) Bye-bye. Do you want to support the Compassion and Cucumbers podcast? Well, you can do that by joining our Patreon page. We have three different levels of support, and all three come with their own special bonuses. Hey, you can support the podcast and get yourself some really cool merch. All the links and deets are in the show notes. We'll catch you next week on the next episode of Compassion and Cucumbers.